Hello, welcome to IELTS. And uh, today I have a special one. Um, so I was originally working on a, a certain personal project for someone else. Didn't really have time for that because of work. So that came over, and uh, he actually ended up uh, getting someone else who finished the job because you know. I required a lot of time to get through this uh, animating landing here is not my uh, it's not the thing that uh, I could say that I'm really good at so it was taking me a lot of time which I didn't have because of the work so that went nowhere so I went back to um, my personal project which is the F 105 and um, introduce the 105G and today I'll show you um, what it's all about so I have a simple scenario where I fly over the border into Czechoslovakia and um, destroy a single SA2 site and because it's F105G for that purpose I have many many weapons to choose from, specifically for destroying SAMs. As you can already see, I do have the Shrike, the AGM-45A1, pre-selected, but I can also select the AGM-78A1-1 standard AGM. Um, don't be fooled by the A11. Uh, I'll explain that right now. So the way these old anti-radiation missiles work is the secret is pre-tuned or, or to work against a certain set of frequencies. It is so-called narrow band secret. So what they would do on the ground is they would select the correct seeker for the type of radar that you'll be attacking, fit it to the missile, and off you go. Specifically, the AGM 45A1 or A-1 that would be is pre-tuned to attack SA2 radars. The AGM 78A1-1 is just a convenience because I couldn't find the actual uh, numbering for the seekers for the 78A but this, co this corresponds again to an SA2 radar meaning that I can only attack an SA2 radar which also has painted me so if the radar is not painting me no luck I can't really use these so I will need to go in uh, have the radar lock me and then I can launch it. Um, I also have these two loadouts. These are asymmetric loadouts which is another thing that I've done and it's not gonna be released, it's for my personal use. Um, I have changed a bit the flight model code in the engine of the game which makes my aircraft roll to the side with asymmetric loadouts. Um, and all I will need is that single 78. Um, so um, let's do this. This will be like a 100 kilometer trip. We will be launching somewhere around here. Missile will impact and uh, we'll go home.
and here you can see it already rolling to the left. This shaking is, by the way, if you see it, inherent to the F-105 flight model, which I'll have to fine-tune. And the um, HM-78 3 model is a placeholder only. I did make it myself, but it is a placeholder. It has a lot of uh, errors. So as you could see in the log hard on the right side, I am already painted by a radar. However, this is the surveillance radar on the radar side. I can switch to the side. There we go. We have several assets here that are important for the radar side to work. And yes, that's that's. Um, Redexture tanks that I made because I I like them. Anyway, uh, this is not the brain of the radar side. I mean, technically in the code it is, but uh, in reality it's it's this vehicle. This is the command post. Command post needs to be powered through three generators generating power. That is transformed in this vehicle into a power that can be actually used by these assets. <clears throat> so, command point requires power and controls the engagement radar. Engagement radar receives a target from the surveillance radar, which is here. That's what's painting me. Once the radar picks me up, it will keep track of me until I'm in range for the actual battery to engage. The battery has an engagement radars and six launchers. So the radar receives me as a target when I'm close enough. In this case, it will be like 40 kilometers away. At that point, this radar will try and lock me. Once it locks me, it will make sure that I'm in range and it will launch these missiles at me. It will launch them one by one with at least six seconds in between them. And um, uh, uh, let me think. Yes, only three at the same time. So, uh, when this picks me up, this battery will be alerted and it will start preparing three launchers with three missiles of them. Preparing a single missile takes a minute and a half, but you can be preparing three of them in parallel. That's what will be happening. So, the missile will pre prepare three missiles once I'm in range and once the missiles are ready, it will try and launch them at me in. Not all that quick succession, but six seconds at least between the missiles. Uh, and it will try and guide them into me. To disable the radar sight, what I have to do is step one disable the surveillance radar. Once the surveillance radar is out, this missile can no longer receive targets. If the radar site has already received a target, it doesn't need the surveillance radar anymore. So, you have to destroy the battery itself. To disable the battery, you need to destroy at least a single vehicle out of these six um, objects. Either one of the generators, the transformer, the command post, or the radar itself. For destroying these vehicles in general, usually it's bombs or uh, cluster bombs. But with advancement in science, we do have the anti radiation missile, which will go ahead and will target the radar specifically. 
and uh, a little speed up the time. I've been recording for 10 minutes now, and um, I'm taking my sweet time actually trying to explain this. So let's see. We're flying in the direction of the radar site, approximately. And that's it. You saw it in the HUD that we now have a new search radar, quote unquote. In this case, it's actually a tracking radar. It's the SA2 main radar, which has decided to lock me. Um, things will start going quickly now, so um, the trick is it is displayed as a searching radar if it's just tracking you. If it's displayed as a tracking radar instead, it means that the missile has the, the site has launched at you. So for now I need to go into afterburner and speed up a bit. We need to provide this missile with as much altitude difference and speed as possible so that it can get that reliable. We will pitch up slightly. Let's just put it out and see what it was. Okay, this should be okay. No. And. Uh, It looks like it launched at me from the thing. Yeah, and it switched to tracking mode, so we need to. Oh, we don't need to because the missile has missed. It's underestimated where that would be. So, I'll let it pull out. And. Let's, let's observe what is going to happen. Oh, there we go. A missile came in and hit the actual data. What I will have to do in the future is uh, allow the missile site to react, that is, turn itself off so that the missile has no longer an object to track. This won't be a concern for the AGM-88 because that could deal with it the later AGM 78s as well, but these are the early examples that served in the first half of the Vietnam War uh, for 1960s in Europe, so um, we won't be needing that for a while, so this will be your primary seed option, and uh, it's working spectacularly well. I might actually tune down the, the angle at which it, uh, the missile can actually pick up the radar site currently, it's 90 degrees to each side, so that's just for information. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.